Chapter 17 Taking rat catching lessons from someone with a different set of equipment was a challenge for Flora. I don't get it, she said. Deputy and Sheriff were in a space behind a stack of boxes that had become their training ground. Can you explain it again? Crouch, pounce, dig in your claws, and then at the end, bite the neck to finish it off. It's called the death bite, and anyone with a killer instinct knows how to do it. All business, Sophia demonstrated each step with great energy. When she got to the death bite part, she attacked a coil of rope. Like that. Couldn't be simpler. Um, Flora didn't want Sophia to think she didn't have the killer instinct. What will you do while I'm crouching and pouncing and doing the death bites? Sophia will be watching your technique and encouraging you. I think the part about digging in the claws is getting me mixed up. Flora stared down at her hoofs. Trust Sophia, said the cat, locking eyes with Flora. Now get out there and make me proud. Flora crept around the, around the corner and crouched. Two rats were chewing on the corner of a box. She gathered herself for the pounce. The wide-bodied one turned and saw her. He bared his teeth. Now, whispered Sophia from behind Flora. Flora tensed her muscles and leapt. What happened next was the most embarrassing moment of her life. Her hooves, which might have leapt just fine on dirt or manure pile, slipped out from under her on the wooden boards. She fell flat on her belly, which knocked the air out of her. As she lay gasping, she thought she might have heard laughter as the rats padded away. Sophia switched her tail. At least the crouch was good. Flora got to her feet. Twice more she crept out to meet her enemy and twice more suffered the same result. The only difference was that each time she pounced with less enthusiasm, as so to save her poor belly, she dragged herself back to the sheriff. Not bad, said Sophia. You're starting to get it now. Flora moaned, and a stream of light flashed down into the dark hold. The rats scurried for the shadows, and Sophia froze. Who is that? she asked. Just Amos the cook. Breakfast time. Come on. Flora dashed back to her bowl. She threw herself on her change to disguise that she was no longer bound by them. Sophia curled in behind her. How's my little ham bone doing, eh? Almost Amos dumped out a particularly large helping of leftovers. I got a big feast for you today. You're still skinny. Get big and fat, okay? The cook turned and looked around. He tried to see in the dark corners. Where's that lazy cat? Flora felt Sophia curl in closer. Amos still has rats in his kitchen, he boomed, then peered around a few more boxes before heading up the stairs. Anything in that bowl for a lazy cat? whispered Sophia. Pig food smells pretty good right now. Well, don't just sniff it or smells will be all you'll get, said Flora, plunging her snout into the slops. She managed to bolt down the first bite and get a second one in her mouth while Sophia was still only daintily sniffing. Snap, click, Sophia crouched. She peered. Flora grabbed another bite. Suddenly, a wave of brown and gray flowed over the deck boards. Sophia jumped three feet in the air. Run for your life, she screeched. Flora backed up, chewing and waiting for the tug of chain. When it didn't come, she remembered she was free. Sophia, wait for me, she called, and trotted away from the hideous sloshing and slurping. Sophia's hair stood straight out all over her body. Is that what happens every time? Every day, Flora answered. I've gotten used to it. I had no idea there were so many rats in the world. Flora slumped to the floor. It didn't seem very likely either of them would be getting a full meal anytime soon. Sophia poked a claw into Flora's back. Training time is over, deputy. This is for real. 
Ouch, said Flora. What's the plan? Sophia leaned close to Flora's ear. Fight for what belongs to you. Forget about technique. Just pound the stuffing out of that next naked-tailed, beady-eyed bully who tries to take away your food. Chapter 18. Where's my cat? shouted Amos as he came clumping down the stairs the next morning. Again, Sophia pressed close to Flora while Amos delivered a delicious smelling mixture of bread and gravy and squash rinds. He cursed as he stuck his bare hand into the bucket and swished the last drops of gravy into Flora's bowl. Nothing but rats in Amos's kitchen. His voice bounced off the sides of the hole. Hey, cat, I find you. I strangle you myself and feed you to the rats. He stomped off. Flora didn't take her usual few bites of, of food this time. Instead, she slowly moved until she was standing over her bowl. Sophia stood next to her. Her Sophia's pep talk yesterday, and after Sophia agreed to handle the death bites, they decided that today would be all or nothing. Flora even sensed a quietness from the rats, as if they knew a change was coming. Watch out, Sophia whispered. Flora couldn't see anything. Cats had better eyes in this sort of light than pigs. Then the rat king waddled out of the darkness. Sophia hissed, and he stopped and sniffed the air. He was clearly more worried about challenging a determined-looking cat than he was about tangling with a pig. He took another step forward. Sophia hissed again, but the rat simply continued on. Flora felt the old weakness in her knees return. Okay now, whispered Sophia, get him. Flora's mind went blank. She never did get the hang of Sophia's training. What was she supposed to do? Leap? Claw? Bite? The rat seemed to smell Flora's fear. He stood up, opened his mouth, and brought his teeth together with a snap. A flash of anger surged through Flora. How dare this dirty little bully with his dirty little friends demand that she give up her food? Like Nessie from the farm, Flora was fed up, and a mean streak she never knew she had flared. In a flash, she spun around, cocked her back foot, and shot it out behind her like a horse. She felt a connect and heard the Rat King land with a soft clink on her discarded chain. Yow, shouted Sophia. That was perfect. Flora turned to look at her enemy stretched out and still. She couldn't believe what she had done. Then the back, the Rat's back leg twitched. Sophia, she called, not moving her eyes from him. He twitched again. Sophia, do something. It's killer instinct time. Sophia sprang into action and sank her teeth into the king's neck. Here comes another one. Flora hoped she could do it again. Sophia let her victim loose and crouched next to Flora. Make me proud, deputy. Every hair on Sophia's back stood on end. The second rat darted close. Flora spun around. Pow, she muttered to herself as she lashed out another kick. The rat tumbled tail over whiskers, and Sophia was on him until he stopped moving. She gave this one a shake before slinking back to Flora's side. Two down, only two hundred to go. Flora circled her bowl, still filled with delicious smelling food. The thieving mob had crept out from behind the boxes, whiskers quivering. The rats whined and clicked their teeth in frustration. They foamed and twisted over and around themselves, a great surging mass of fur. They weren't looking at the food any longer. They were watching Flora's hind feet. The rats in front suddenly charged. She spun in place and fired both black hooves at the oncoming furry bodies. Rats tried to climb her, and she shook them off, ignoring their sharp claws. Again, she lashed out again and again. Sophia darted around to the stunned ones to deliver bites. Finally, the remaining rats scattered into the shadows, moaning and whining. 
eight kills. So if you leaped into the air and then danced a victory dance, I did it. I killed a rat. I killed eight rats. I really did it. Flora sat, dazed and proud. I'm unbelievable, Sophia crowned. I'm the queen of cats, the enemy of rats, the sheriff of a thousand teeth. Beware my killer instinct. She stood on her hind legs and looked into Flora's eyes. All that training I gave you sure paid off, my cherie, she said. You can thank me later. Come on, let's celebrate. I'm starving. The two friends had a wonderful feast. Actually, Flora thought she could have eaten a little more, but she was glad to share with the sheriff. After they finished, they dragged each rat carcass by the tail over to the stairs, putting them in a neat row. Then they found a corner to curl up in together for an after-battle nap. What treats would Amos bestow on her now? when he saw what a useful creature his little pig was. Surely he would grant her not just special slops, but freedom. She imagined stepping out of the hold and into the sunshine with Sophia, walking down the line of dog cages. Word would have spread about her hidden talent, and she wouldn't be able to hold her head high enough.